A quiet celebration is held in North Korea. Despite worries that North Korea might fire off another intercontinental ballistic missile to mark the 69th anniversary of its founding, the, regi the regime says spent the day celebrating last week's nuclear test. North Korea marked the 69th anniversary of its founding Saturday with typical ceremonies and a fanfare as the international community watched for another potential missile test. The South Korean government said it was closely monitoring activity in the north as speculation mounted about another missile launch that could be connected to the commemoration of the establishment in 1948 of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. Earlier in the week, South Korea said it had seen signs of preparation for another missile test, with South Korean's prime minister calling the situation very grave. By late Saturday, though, no test had been detected. North Korea has a history of using its military technology to mark significant holidays. Last year on this date, North Korea tested its fifth nuclear device. The anniversary comes this year, just a week after North Korea launched its sixth most powerful nuclear test. Military officials in South Korea said that there have been no signs to suggest a missile launch or other provocation during the big day. Rather, North Korea has been focusing on promoting what it calls its successful hydrogen bomb test. North Korea's state newspaper Dodong Shimun said that nuclear weapons make the country more secure and that it should develop more cutting-edge weapons and keep making breakthroughs. Other media also focus on promoting the regime's socialist system. South Korea's military are keeping a close eye on the North for signs of additional provocations. James McKeon, a North Korea policy analyst at the Center for Arms Control in Washington, tells VOA it would not have been surprising if the country had prepared some kind of missile or nuclear test to mark the holiday this year. Even if it had, he said it would not have been a major development in the already tense relationship between North Korea and the United States. Tom Plant, Director for Prol Proliferation and Nuclear Policy at RUSI, says while North Korea's advancement is ultimately to keep the Kim regime in power, the Trump administration needs to do more and the international community has yet to get beyond sanctions. Well, I think his end game is to stay in power, to keep North Korea uh, the shape and way it is at the moment, which means deterring U.S.-led regime change. I mean, they saw the examples of Iraq and Libya and what happened to dictators there who gave up nuclear weapons programs or alleged nuclear weapons programs. I would say that uh, Trump's response to this issue has been less than stellar so far. There's still time for him to improve, but given that his first act or one of his first acts was to throw insults at one of his closest allies in the region, South Korea, uh, I'm not sure that he's got off to the best start. He seriously needs to improve from this point on. China's response as ever is key, um, but I see no indication that their you know, fundamental strategic calculations have changed. I mean, their policies towards North Korea is the three no's. No war, no instability, and no nukes in that order, which means they won't take any action until that policy changes that threatens instability or war in the pursuit of getting rid of nukes. The community isn't unified, so it's, it's impossible to think of a, of a policy response that will itself be unified as a result. The second thing is if the response is sanctions, it's important to think about two different kinds of sanctions. The economic coercion that the US wants to place on North Korea and the counter-proliferation sanctions that will stop North Korea selling its technologies to other countries or buying equipment and so forth that will help it develop faster. A South Korean defense ministry spokesman told the French news agency there had been no sign Saturday of further preparations for a missile launch. He said North Korea has the ability to fire ballistic missiles from mobile launchers, so the South Korean military is maintaining its utmost defense posture, keeping a close watch over the north. According to McKeon, the North has the technology to launch missiles from almost anywhere in the country and has used tactics in the past to try to evade detection from international intelligence services. 
The South Korean Yonhap News Agency quoted an unidentified government official as saying that the North could carry out a seventh nuclear test at its Punggye-ri test site at any moment, and it may hold another nuclear test in October to coincide with the founding anniversary of the ruling Workers' Party. The installation of four additional terminal high-altitude area defense uh, rocket launchers in South Korea is in its final stages. According to officials on Sunday, the construction of the metal pads that the four launchers will be placed on is almost complete, with the metal pads of the first two launchers also being reinforced. One of the four launchers could be operational from as early as later this week. The four remaining THAAD launchers were placed on the base in Songju County last Thursday, in addition to the two stations there since April, completing the sixth launcher THAAD battery. Beijing has stepped up its economic retaliation against Korean businesses despite Seoul's efforts to ease tensions over the deployment of the U.S. missile defense shield. effects are now visibly spreading across multiple sectors. South Korea's agricultural exports to China have fallen for six months in a row since the tensions between South Korea and China began to grow in March. According to the Korea Agri-Fisheries and Food Trade Corporation, Korea exported around $86 million of agricultural exports to China in August, an almost 11 percent drop on year. With the deployment of four additional launchers, there are growing concerns that the export figures will drop even further. In the car industry, Hyundai and Gia Motors, Korea's two biggest car makers, are seeing plummeting sales. As the economic retaliation over THAAD deployment hit the industry, pundits forecast total sales of less than 7 million cars this year, which would mark the lowest figures in six years and is 15 percent below the target sales for the year. The sales figures in China show the most noticeable drop, with just 1.3 million cars sold so far this year, less than half of the production capacity in China. The effects of all this can be seen on the Korean stock market as the total stock value of the top 10 companies heavily reliant on Chinese consumers tallied at 45 billion U.S. dollars on Friday. According to Korea Exchange, that is a drop of more than 20 billion U.S. dollars over the past 13 months, a 27 percent decrease compared to last July before the deployment of the THAAD batteries was finalized.